Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. P.K. Aluwalia from Physics Department, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Fermi gas applications, white dwarf stars, Thomas Fermi model, and quantum Hall effect from paper Statistical Mechanics. This module, Fermi gas applications, has been developed for postgraduate level as per the following subtopics. White dwarf stars involving life cycle of a star and Hertzsprung Russell diagram, white dwarf problem as electron gas in stars as degenerate relativistic Fermi gas, calculation of its energy pressure, equilibrium radius of the star, and Chandrasekhar limit. Then we will look at Thomas Fermi statistical model of an atom, derivation of Thomas Fermi equation, solution of Thomas Fermi equation, electric potential and electron density, binding energy of an atom. Thereafter, we will look at classical and quantum Hall effect. Classical Hall effect involves DC conductivity and resistivity tensor. In quantum Hall effect, we will look at integer quantum Hall effect and fractional quantum Hall effect. So students, let us see what are we going to learn in this module. We will understand the physics of three very important Fermi gas problems, namely white dwarf star problem of highly degenerate relativistic Fermi gas. Thomas Fermi statistical model of an atom and origin of quantum Hall effect in two-dimensional electron gas. We will also try to appreciate the evolution of a star through an understanding of Hertzsprung Russell diagram through a very vital scatter data of luminosity of a star versus its temperature. Understand that white dwarf stars have unique place in Hertzsprung Russell diagram and what are their characteristic properties. State white dwarf problem according to which, despite the fact that a star after it has used up all its hydrogen, doesn't continually contract to a point called gravitational collapse. Through a closer look at properties of a white dwarf star model as a highly degenerate relativistic electron gas providing an outward poly pressure to balance inward gravitational pressure lending stability to the white dwarf. Calculate ground state energy of relativistic degenerate electron gas and hence derive pressure in ultra relativistic and non relativistic cases. Calculate the poly pressure and gravitational pressure of relativistic degenerate electron gas. Derive relationship between radius of the white dwarf star and arrive at famous Chandrasekhar limit of the size of a white dwarf star. We will look at the model of an atom from statistical point of view as proposed by Thomas and Fermi by treating atom as having a non-uniform electron density distribution function nr experiencing an external potential phi r. Derive Thomas Fermi equation and solve it for electron density distribution function nr experiencing an external potential phi r and their dependence on atomic number z. Calculate using Thomas Fermi model, binding energy of an atom and discuss its applicability for heavier atoms. Understand the classical Hall effect, derive resistivity tensor and conductivity tensor, calculate DC resistivity and Hall resistivity and see their variation with magnetic field for getting a perspective to appreciate quantum Hall effect. Understand how quantum Hall effect arises in a two-dimensional electron gas encountered in hand projections of gallium arsenide, gallium aluminium arsenide and metal oxide semiconductors. Appreciate how quantum Hall effect differs from classical Hall effect with new features appearing in their DC resistivity and Hall resistivity, later being quantized due to appearance of highly degenerate Landau levels derive through qualitative arguments the quantized expression for Hall resistivity. 
appreciate the significance of discovery of quantum Hall effect leading to a highly accurate standard unit of resistance and highly accurate measurement of fine structure constant. So in this module, we look at three very interesting applications of Fermi gas, namely electron gas in white dwarf stars treated as a relativistic Fermi system, Thomas Fermi model of an atom to understand distribution of electrons in atoms around nucleus with large Z, and quantum Hall effect as observed in a two-dimensional electron gas found in super lattices or MOSFET junctions. First problem has been drawn from astrophysics, encountered in the study of evolution of a star, which was studied by Nobel laureate S. Chandrasekhar as a highly degenerate relativistic electron gas. Second problem happened to be an attempt to have a statistical model of an atom, which later became the precursor to density functional theory. The last problem has been of great significance in the study of low dimensional system and has resulted in the standardization of unit of electrical resistivity ohm to an accuracy of 10 raised to power minus 9. It has also provided a new way to get a highly accurate value of fine structure constant. Life cycle of a star and Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Problem of dwarf stars actually corresponds to one of the terminal points in stellar evolution. About 15 billion years ago, this all started with the Big Bang in which huge amount of hydrogen and helium were produced. It took another 2 billion years for these huge amount of gases to form nebulae and galaxies. Nebula meaning cloud is made up of dust and gases which has regions of different densities. In the regions of higher densities, we have more atoms closer to each other compared to regions of lower density. In the regions of higher density, a center for gravitational attraction gets created leading to nucleation and the so-called protostar is born. As a result of gravitation, density of matter at the core of the star increases, causing an increase of kinetic energy of hydrogen atoms in the star and consequently an increase in temperature of the core. This also leads to increase in output pressure. So, two competing mechanisms in the evolution of star gets operating, one gravitational attraction towards the center of the core and the other kinetic output pressure which needs to balance each other for state of equilibrium of the star. The huge amount of hydrogen present in the star provides fuel for production of energy via fusion process. As the hydrogen gets burnt over, the concentration of helium in the core of the star increases and this initiates next step in the evolution of star. At this stage, gravity overtakes the outward pressure and the star starts shrinking. However, around the burnt up core, a shell of hydrogen gets formed which starts thermonuclear burning which gets finished in a very short duration and leaves an expanded mantle with huge increase in size of the star which is red in color forming a red giant star. The contracted core in the red giant starts getting heated and a stage comes when a set of new thermonuclear reactions start via carbon nitrogen cycle. At this point, it will be interesting to bring in a very interesting data about luminosity of stars versus their surface temperature leading to now famous Hertzsprung Russell diagram as shown in figure 1. In this diagram, hottest stars lie in the upper left corner and the coolest in the lower right corner. It is indeed a scatter diagram with a band of stars roughly going diagonally from top left to bottom right known as main sequence of stars. This is a sequence on which our sun also lies. In the portion above the main sequence, we have two clusters of supergiant stars and giant stars. In the portion below the main sequence, there is another cluster which corresponds to a type of burnt out stars known as white dwarfs 
and correspond to a situation where star has reached the final stage of its evolution. In the following, we are interested in looking at why white dwarfs lie in the unique slot of HR diagram with low luminosity and what prevents them from collapsing under the influence of gravity. The first white dwarf we discovered was Cyrus P, a faint companion star of Cyrus, also known as dog star. It will be interesting to compare its physical parameters with Sun in a tabular form. Let's look at each physical parameter one by one. Mass Cyrus B has mass 1.05 times mass of the Sun, where mass of the Sun is 1.989 into 10 is per 33 grams. Radius is equal to 0.008 times the radius of the Sun, where the radius of the sun is equal to 6.96 into 10 to the power 10 centimeters. Luminosity, it is 0 0.03 times the luminosity of sun for Cyrus B, whereas the luminosity of the sun is equal to 3.90 into 10 to the power 33 org per second. Temperature, when treated as black body, corresponding to Cyrus B is 27,000. Kelvin and of Sun it is 5800 Kelvin. The gravitational redshift is 89 plus minus 16 kilometers per second, whereas for the Sun it is 0 0.6 kilometers per second. Mean density of Cyrus B is 2.8 times 10 raised per 6 grams per centimeter cube, and of the Sun it is 1.41 into 10 raised per 6 grams per centimeter cube. Core density is 3.3 into 10 is per 7 gram per centimeter cube, whereas of the sun it is 1.6 into 10 is per 2 grams per centimeter cube. The core temperature is 2.2 into 10 is per 7 Kelvin, and that of the sun it is 1.6 into 10 is per 7 K. A look at the table clearly shows that white dwarfs have very low luminosity, very large gravity very high core density and very small radius compared to sun. Its core temperature is the same as that of sun. The reason for their low luminosity is absence of hydrogen. The mass of the star is provided by helium nuclei. So let us look at the white dwarf problem. The question at this stage which arises is that how does a star after it has used up all its hydrogen does not continually contract to a point called gravitational collapse. This was identified as white dwarf problem, which was resolved by S. Chandrasekhar, well known Nobel laureate and astrophysicist in 1930s. To formulate the problem of white dwarf, we look at some of its characteristic features as listed in table 1 in more details. The core temperature of both sun and white dwarf are of the same order of magnitude that is 10 raised per 7 Kelvin. In electron volts it is of the order of 1000 electron volt. This value is approximately 40 times higher than the ionization potential of helium which is approximately 25 electron volts. Therefore, helium gas in the core of the white dwarf star is completely ionized such that each helium atom provides an alpha particle and two electrons. Thus, helium can be seen as equal to helium ion plus two electrons. Let us assume that there are n electrons in a white dwarf, which means that there are n upon two alpha particles. Since each alpha particle has a mass approximately equal to four proton masses, then the mass m of the white dwarf is equal to n times the mass of the electron plus 2 times mass of the proton, which can be approximated as 2 times n times mass of the proton, where m e is the mass of electron and m p is the mass of the proton. Secondly, the core mass density rho of the white dwarf star is of the order of 
rho is approximately equal to 10 is per 7 grams per centimeter cube. Using this information and 2 and knowing that mass of the proton is approximately equal to 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 24 grams, we can calculate the electron density in the white dwarf as n is equal to n upon v is equal to capital M upon 2 mp divided by capital M upon rho which is equal to rho upon 2 mp which is approximately equal to 10 raised to power 30 per centimeter cube. Thirdly, knowing the electron density calculated in step 2 above, we can calculate the Fermi momentum Pf is equal to h bar multiplied by 3 pi square n raised to power 1 by 3 as Pf is equal to 10 raised to power minus 27 into 3 into 10 raised to power 10 is equal to 3 into 10 raised to power minus 17 gram centimeter per second. Hence, Fermi energy Ef is equal to Pf square by 2 Me is equal to 9 into 10 raised to power minus 34 divided by 2 into 9.1 into 10 raised to power minus 28 which is approximately equal to 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 ergs, which is approximately equal to 3 into 10 to the power 5 electron volts. Since 1 electron volt is approximately equal to 12,000 Kelvin, Fermi temperature Tf in the case of white dwarf is of the order of 3.6 into 10 to the power 9 Kelvin. The ratio of the core temperature T of white dwarf and Fermi temperature Tf is of the order of T upon Tf is equal to 10 raised to power 7 divided by 3.6 into 10 raised to power 9, which is approximately equal to 3 into 10 raised to power minus 3. This implies that gas of electrons in the white dwarf is highly degenerate, and the white dwarf electron gas can be looked at T is equal to 0. Furthermore, the velocity of the electrons in this electron gas is V is equal to 2 times Ef divided by mc square whole raised to power half multiplied by c, which is equal to 2 into 3 into 10 raised to power 5 divided by 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power 6 raised to power half multiplied by c, which is approximately equal to c, which is hence comparable with the velocity of light. Therefore, the degenerate electron gas in the white dwarf must be treated as relativistic. Electron gas in stars as degenerate relativistic Fermi gas. Based on the facts stated above, a realistic model of the white dwarf star can be drawn as follows A. It can be treated as a spherical celestial object composed of helium nuclei and highly degenerate relativistic electron gas. B. Compared to the motion of electrons, since helium nuclei are heavy, they can be treated at rest. C. Though electron gas is considered at T is equal to 0, since it obeys Pauli's exclusion principle, it exerts an outward radial pressure. For dwarf star to be in equilibrium, this outward pressure must be balanced by attractive gravitational force towards the center of the white dwarf star. D. All other possible effects such as radiation pressure due to helium burning, electron interaction, production of electron-positron pairs, production of neutrinos being produced in weak leptonic processes, etc. have been neglected. Under these model conditions, we need to calculate outward poly pressure and inward gravitational pressure to arrive at stability criterion putting a limit on the size of the white dwarf. Let us calculate the ground state energy. Since we know Fermi momentum at T is equal to 0 is given by Pf is equal to h bar multiplied by 3 pi square n raised to power 1 by 3 where n is equal to n upon v is the electron number density. The kinetic energy of the relativistic electron of the white dwarf star can then be written as Ep is equal to square root of c square p square plus m square c power 4 minus mc square. Thus, Ep is equal to mc square 
multiplied by square root of 1 plus p square upon m square c square minus 1, where m is the rest mass. The ground state energy of the electrons in the white dwarf star can now be calculated. That is, E0 is equal to V times 2 into 4 pi upon h cube integral from 0 to pf ep p square dp or E0 is equal to V into 2 into 4 pi upon h cube integral from 0 to pf square root of c square p square plus m square c power 4 p square dp. Rearranging E0 is equal to V into 2 into 4 pi m power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube integral from 0 to pf square root of p square upon m square c square plus 1 multiplied by p square upon m square c square d p upon m c. Let us put p upon f c equal to sine hyperbolic theta such that d of p upon m c is equal to cos hyperbolic theta d theta and we get E0 is equal to V times 2 into 4 pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube integral from 0 to theta f square root of sine hyperbolic square theta plus 1 into sine hyperbolic square theta cos hyperbolic theta d theta is equal to 8 pi V m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube integral from 0 to theta f sin hyperbolic square theta cos hyperbolic square theta d theta. The above integral can be easily evaluated. The call sin hyperbolic square theta cos hyperbolic square theta is equal to cos hyperbolic square 2 theta divided by 4. So that 1 upon 4 multiplied by integral of 0 to theta f 4 times sin hyperbolic square theta cos hyperbolic square d theta is equal to 1 upon 4 integral from 0 to theta f cos hyperbolic square 2 theta d theta is equal to 1 upon 8 integral from 0 to theta f cos hyperbolic 4 theta minus 1 d theta is equal to 1 upon 8 whole multiplied by 1 upon 4 sin hyperbolic 4 theta f minus theta f. Conventionally, sin hyperbolic theta f is equal to pf upon mc is put equal to x. The above expression can be further simplified recalling that sin hyperbolic 4 theta f is equal to 2 sin hyperbolic 2 theta f cos hyperbolic 2 theta f is equal to 4 sin hyperbolic theta f into square root of 1 plus sin hyperbolic square theta f into 1 plus 2 sin hyperbolic square theta f is equal to 4 x times square root of 1 plus x square multiplied by 1 plus 2 x square and theta f is equal to log of exponential theta f is equal to log of sin hyperbolic theta f plus cos hyperbolic theta f is equal to log of x plus square root of 1 plus x square. 14 can then be written as 1 upon 4 integral from 0 to theta f 4 sin hyperbolic square theta cos hyperbolic square theta d theta is equal to 1 upon 8 x times square root of 1 plus x square into 1 plus 2 x square minus log of x plus square root of 1 plus x square. Putting x square root of 1 plus x square into 1 plus 2 x square minus log of x plus square root of 1 plus x square is equal to a new function chi x equation 13 for the ground state energy of the degenerate relativistic electron gas can be written as E0 is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube multiplied by v multiplied by chi as a function of x. Now let us look at the pressure. The pressure exerted by the highly degenerate relativistic electron gas in white dwarf can be obtained using the relation P is equal to minus delta E0 by delta V. Here we have to be careful that volume dependence in E0 is via both V and chi x. Since x in chi x depends on V via Pf is equal to h bar multiplied by 3 pi square n raised to power 1 by 3 where n is equal to n upon V. Therefore, P is equal to minus delta E0 by delta V is equal to pi m power 4 c power 5 upon h cube 
multiplied by minus chi x minus v into partial derivative of chi x with respect to x into partial derivative of x with respect to v. Noting that partial derivative of chi with respect to x is equal to 1 plus x square multiplied by 1 plus 2 x square plus 4 x square into 1 plus x square plus 1 plus 2 x square multiplied by x square whole divided by 1 plus x square square root minus 1 upon square root of 1 plus x square or partial derivative of chi with respect to x is equal to 1 plus x square 8 x square divided by square root of 1 plus x square which is equal to 8 x square into square root of 1 plus x square or partial derivative of x with respect to v is equal to minus 1 upon 3 x upon v. Hence, p is equal to minus delta e naught upon delta v is equal to pi m power 4 c power 5 upon h q multiplied by minus chi x plus 8 upon 3 x cube square root of 1 plus x square or p is equal to minus delta e naught by delta v is equal to pi m power 4 c power 5 upon h cube multiplied by x into square root of 1 plus x square multiplied by 2 upon 3 x square minus 1 plus log of x plus square root of 1 plus x square. Put x multiplied by square root of 1 plus x square multiplied by 2 upon 3 x square minus 1 plus log of x plus square root of 1 plus x square is equal to 5 x. We get p is equal to minus partial derivative of e naught with respect to v is equal to pi times m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube phi x. Let us look at energy density 17 and pressure 25 in two limiting cases, extreme relativistic case and non-relativistic case by expanding chi x and phi x. So, let us look at first ultra relativistic case. For this case, x is very very much greater than 1 that is pf is very very much greater than mc and therefore chi x and phi x can be expanded in leading terms of x that is chi x is approximately equal to 2x raised to power 4 plus 2x square and phi x is equal to 2 upon 3x raised to power 4 minus 2 upon 3x square thus from 17 and 25 the ground state energy and pressure can be written as E naught is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube v times 2 into x raised to power 4 plus x square and p is equal to the partial derivative of E naught with respect to v with a negative sign is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube into 2 upon 3 x raised to power 4 minus x square. Thus, in leading approximation, we have E naught is equal to pi naught m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube into v into 2 into x raised to power 4, or p is equal to minus delta E naught upon delta v is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube into 2 upon 3 x raised to power 4 is equal to 1 upon 3 times E naught upon v that is p is equal to one third of energy density. In terms of number density above expression yields pressure is proportional to number density raised to power 4 upon 3. Let us look at the non-relativistic case. For this case x is very very much less than 1 that is pf is very very much less than mc and therefore chi x and phi x can be expanded in Taylor series for small values of x. Therefore, chi x is equal to 8 upon 3 x cube plus 4 upon 5 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order of x raised to power 7 and phi x is equal to 8 upon 15 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order of x raised to power 7. Thus, in the non-relativistic limit, we have E naught is equal to pi m raised to power 5 c raised to power 5 h cube into v multiplied by 8 upon 3 x cube plus 4 upon 5 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order of x raised to power 7 is equal to n times mc square plus 
pi times m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube into v multiplied by 4 upon 5 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order x raised to power 7. Where first term here is rest mass energy of the n electrons and the non relativistic energy is given by E naught minus nmc square which is equal to pi m power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube multiplied by v multiplied by 4 upon 5 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order x raised to power 7 and p is equal to minus partial derivative of E naught with respect to v is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube multiplied by 8 upon 15 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order of x raised to power 7 and above is equal to 2 third of E naught upon V that is pressure is 2 third of energy density. In terms of number density above expression yields pressure proportional to number density raised to power 5 by 3. Now we will try to calculate equilibrium radius of the star and the Chandrasekhar limit. For a white dwarf star we had noted earlier that its mass is given by capital M is equal to 2 times mass of the proton multiplied by capital N and its radius R is equal to 3 V upon 4 pi raised to power 1 by 3. Then X is equal to Fermi momentum divided by MC which can be written as X is equal to PF upon MC is equal to H upon MC divided by 2 pi into 3 pi square N upon V raised to power 1 by 3 is equal to h bar upon capital R m c multiplied by 8 pi m upon 8 m p raised to power 1 by 3. Defining dimensionless quantities r bar is equal to r upon h bar m c and m bar is equal to 9 pi m upon 8 m p then x is equal to m bar raised to power 1 by 3 divided by r bar. 29th can be written as p is equal to pi m power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube multiplied by 2 upon 3 multiplied by m bar raised to power 4 by 3 divided by r bar raised to power 4 minus m bar raised to power 2 by 3 divided by r bar square is equal to k times m bar raised to power 4 by 3 divided by r bar raised to power 4 minus m bar raised to power 2 by 3 divided by r bar square where k is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube multiplied by 2 upon 3. So now let us see what establishes equilibrium in the white dwarf star. Up to this point we assumed that this highly degenerate relativistic electron gas is enclosed in a box which prevents it from leaking out. However, the reality is that it is the gravity which stops the gas from leaking out. So, equilibrium implies that poly pressure must be equated with gravitational pressure. To calculate gravitational pressure, we need to first of all know the gravitational self energy, also known as gravitational potential energy, which is the amount of energy required to assemble the white dwarf star of mass m and radius r. If we assume that the white dwarf star has uniform density, then its self energy is 3 upon 5 capital G m square upon r where capital G is the gravitational constant. However, since the density of the white dwarf is not uniform, the factor of 3 upon 5 needs to be modified which we assume to be equal to alpha approximately equal to 1 and can be calculated only when the density is known as a function of radius of the star. Thus, gravitational self energy can be written as nu r is equal to minus alpha g m square by r. Expressing it in terms of volume by recalling that r is equal to 3 v upon 4 pi raised to power 1 by 3 and differentiating it with respect to v, the gravitational pressure can be obtained as p g is equal to partial derivative of nu r with respect to v is equal to minus alpha times gravitational constant into mass of the star multiplied by 4 pi upon 3 raised to power 1 by 3 partial derivative of v raised to power minus 1 by 3 with respect to v is equal to alpha upon 3 gm square multiplied by 3 upon 4 pi 
into 4 pi upon 3 v raised to power 4 by 3 which is equal to alpha upon 4 pi into g m square upon r raised to power 4. Expressing it in dimensionless form p g is equal to alpha upon 4 pi 8 m p upon 9 pi whole square into m c upon h bar raised to power 4 multiplied by gravitational constant into 9 pi m upon 8 pi 8 m p raised to power 2 whole divided by r upon h bar m c raised to power 4 is equal to alpha upon 4 pi multiplied by 8 m p divided by 9 pi whole square into m c upon h bar raised to power 4 multiplied by gravitational constant into m bar whole square divided by r bar raised to power 4 is equal to k dash into m bar square upon r bar raised to power 4 where k dash is equal to alpha into gravitational constant upon 4 pi multiplied by 8 m p upon 9 pi whole square into m c upon h bar raised to power 4. Equating poly pressure equation 39 with gravitational pressure equation 42, we can get a relationship between radius and mass of the white dwarf star that is k dash multiplied by m bar square divided by r bar raised to power 4 is equal to k times m bar raised to power 5 by 3 divided by r bar raised to power 4 minus m bar raised to power 2 by 3 divided by r bar raised to power 2 rearranging r bar square is equal to m bar raised to power 2 by 3 multiplied by 1 minus k dash upon k m bar raised to power 2 by 3 putting k upon k dash is equal to m bar 0 raised to power 2 by 3 is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 multiplied by 2 divided by 3 h cube divided by alpha times gravitational constant divided by 4 pi into 8 m p divided by 9 pi square into m c upon 4 raised to power 4 is equal to 27 times pi h bar c upon 64 times alpha times g m p raised to power 2. The radius of the white dwarf star can be written as r bar is equal to m bar raised to power 1 by 3 multiplied by 1 minus m bar upon m bar not raised to power 2 by 3 raised to power half. Here we can come to what is called the famous Chandrasekhar limit. It is obvious from 45 that m bar upon m naught bar must be less than 1 for radius to be real otherwise it will become imaginary. This means that there is an upper limit m0 bar on the mass of the white dwarf. Here m0 is equal to 8 times the mass of proton divided by 9 pi multiplied by m0 bar is equal to 8 times mp upon 9 pi multiplied by 27 times pi h bar c upon 64 times alpha times g mp square whole raised to power 3 by 2. Choosing alpha is equal to 1 and substituting values of the constant m0 is approximately equal to 10 to the power 33 grams which is the mass of the sun. Thus, a white dwarf star mass cannot be greater than the mass of the sun. For an accurate estimate of m0, there has to be an accurate knowledge of alpha. This was rigorously done by Nobel laureate S. Chandrasekhar who estimated it to be 1.44 times mass of the sun and is known after his name as Chandrasekhar limit. Thomas Fermi statistical model of an atom. Let us see what is the question in understanding this very interesting model of, of an atom. One of the most interesting questions during the development of model of an atom was as to how electrons are distributed in an atom, that is how to know electronic structure of an atom. An attempt in this direction from the statistical point of view for an atom of large z in a classy classical way was made independently by Fermi and Thomas known as Thomas Fermi statistical model of an atom. So let's see what goes as inputs into this model. The two starting inputs which go into this model are number one electrons in such an atom can be regarded as a completely degenerate Fermi gas 
of non-uniform electron density function n of r. Secondly, that electrons in this gas are experiencing an external potential phi r. The aim is to calculate electron density distribution nr and electric potential phi r. So, that is what constitutes the derivation of Thaumius Fermi equation. As per the statistics of a completely degenerate Fermi gas, there are exactly two electrons in a phase space cell with momentum p less than or equal to pf, where Fermi momentum of the electron gas is decided by the electron density given by the formula pf is equal to h bar multiplied by 3 pi square n raised to power 1 by 3. So, what is the validity of this? Since n is a function of position and it varies from place to place, so does the pf. This pf must then be treated as a limiting value, the Fermi momentum, a classical way of looking at the problem, which is valid only if spatial variation of the de Broglie wavelength is very small compared to the distances over which pf and phi and n are vary. So, the total energy epsilon of an electron at the highest position r in the Fermi C can be written as epsilon is equal to p f square upon 2 m minus e times phi r. Though kinetic and potential part of the energy depend on r and may vary from place to place, but in stationary state the total energy must remain same. So, that electrons do not tend to move from a region of higher value to lower value till epsilon becomes same everywhere. We further note that at the boundary of the system pf must be 0 and by choosing 0 of the energy we can also have phi is equal to 0. So, that the total energy epsilon is also 0 throughout the system. Thus, for all r pf square r upon 2 m minus e phi r is equal to 0 such that nr in terms of potential phi r can be written as nr is equal to 1 upon 3 pi square multiplied by 2 m e upon h bar square phi r raised to power 3 by 2. Here the electrostatic potential phi r and electron density nr satisfies the Poisson equation that is del square phi r is equal to minus 4 pi rho r is equal to 4 pi e times nr. Substituting 49 and 50, we get del square phi r is equal to 4e times 2me raised to power 3 by 2 divided by 3 pi h bar q multiplied by phi r raised to power 3 by 2. Since system is assumed to have spherical symmetry, 51 can be written as 1 upon r square d upon dr, r square d upon dr phi r is equal to 4 times e multiplied by 2me raised to power 3 by 2 divided by 3 pi h bar q multiplied by phi r raised to power 3 by 2. Equation 52 is the famous Thomas Fermi equation of the system. Now, we will look for the solution of this Thomas Fermi equation and that leads us to the calculation of electrical potential and electron density. Recalling that left hand side of the equation 52 can be written as 1 upon r square d upon dr, r square d upon dr of phi r is equal to 1 upon r second derivative of r phi r with respect to r. Equation 52 can be rewritten as d2 r phi r upon dr square is equal to 4 e times 2 m e raised to power 3 by 2 divided by 3 pi h power q multiplied by r phi r raised to power 3 by 2 divided by r raised to power half or z e multiplied by second derivative of phi r upon z e upon r with respect to r upon mu whole square is equal to z e raised to power 3 by 2 4 e 2 m e raised to power 3 by 2 divided by mu raised to power 3 by 2 3 pi h bar q multiplied by phi r upon z e upon r raised to power 3 by 2 divided by r upon mu raised to power half. If we choose mu raised to power minus 1 is equal to z e raised to power 3 by 2 4 times 2 m e raised to power 3 by 2 upon z times 3 pi h bar q whole raised to power 2 by 3 is equal to 2 times 4 upon 3 pi raised to power 2 by 3 m e square upon h bar square z raised to power 1 by 3 is equal to 2 multiplied by 4 upon 3 pi raised to power 2 by 3 
z raised to power 1 by 3 upon a v is equal to z raised to power 1 by 3 divided by 0 0.88534 times a b having the dimension of length x is equal to r upon mu and phi x is equal to phi r upon z e upon r where z is the atomic number and a b is the first Bohr radius of the hydrogen atom. Thomas Fermi equation 55 can be written in dimensionless form as second derivative of phi x with respect to x is equal to phi x raised to power 3 by 2 divided by x raised to power half. It is a second order nonlinear differential equation. The two boundary conditions which its solution should satisfy are number one, as one moves towards the nucleus of the atom, that is r approaching 0, phi r approaches z e upon r, that is phi x approaches 1. As one moves towards the boundary of the atom, that is r approaching r naught, since atom is neutral, phi as r approaches r naught must approach 0, that is phi as x approaches x naught must approach 0. Also, the solution must satisfy the condition that the integral of the electron density over the whole volume must equal the total number of electrons in the system. That is, integral of nr 4 pi r square dr is equal to z or integral from 0 to infinity 1 upon 3 pi square into 2 me upon h bar square phi r raised to power 3 by 2 4 pi r square dr is equal to z or integral of 1 upon z into 1 upon 3 pi square multiplied by 2 me upon h bar square phi r raised to power 3 by 2 multiplied by 4 pi r square dr is equal to 1. Rearranging, we get integral of mu raised to power 3 by 2 multiplied by 2 times 4 upon 3 pi raised to power 2 by 3 z times z raised to power 1 by 3 me raised to power 2 upon h bar square raised to power 3 by 2 multiplied by phi r upon z e upon r raised to power 3 by 2 r upon mu raised to power half d of r upon mu is equal to 1 or integral of mu raised to power 3 by 2 into mu raised to power minus 3 by 2 multiplied by phi r upon z e upon r raised to power 3 by 2 multiplied by r upon mu raised to power half d r upon mu is equal to 1 or phi r upon z e upon r raised to power 3 by 2 into r upon mu raised to power half d of r upon mu is equal to 1 which can be written in a dimensionless form as integral from 0 to x naught phi x raised to power 3 by 2 x raised to power half dx is equal to 1. Using 56, this can be written as integral from 0 to x naught phi the second derivative of phi with respect to x, x dx is equal to 1. Integrating by parts, x phi dash x minus phi x from 0 to x naught is equal to 1. Or x naught phi dash x naught minus phi x naught plus phi 0 is equal to 1 or x naught phi dash x naught minus 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. This relationship implies that for this relation to be true phi naught x naught must vanish at x is equal to x naught where phi x also vanishes. Solution of Thomas Fermi equation has attracted lot of attention in seeking either approximate analytical solution or numerical solution. Such great names as Sommerfeld and Mazurana have been associated with its solution. Sommerfeld gave an asymptotic solution satisfying the boundary condition at infinity. Phi x is equal to x raised to power 3 upon 144. However, a solution near the origin whose derivative vanishes has been proposed to be phi x is equal to 1 minus 1.5886 x plus 4 upon 3 times x raised to power 3 by 2 plus so on. The complete solution was tabulated numerically by Bush and Caldwell in 1931, a monotonically decreasing function of x. Now from the definition of phi x is equal to phi r upon z e upon r, we can obtain the electrical potential phi r and the electron density n r. Phi r is equal to z e upon r into phi x is equal to z e upon r phi as a function of r multiplied by z raised to power 1 by 3 divided by 0 0.88534 ab which is proportional to z raised to power 4 by 3 and nr is equal to 1 upon 3 pi square multiplied by 2 me upon h bar square phi r raised to power 3 by 2 which is proportional to z square.
Now, let us try to use this model to calculate the binding energy of an atom. In an atom, binding energy is the total energy of the electron cloud that is sum of total kinetic energy of the electron cloud and the potential energy of the electron cloud due to the presence of nucleus in the atom and the potential energy of the electron cloud itself. The mean kinetic energy of an electron at a point R can be obtained by recalling epsilon f is equal to h bar square upon 2 m into 3 pi square n upon v raised to 2 by 3 and integral from 0 to n epsilon f d n dash upon n is equal to 3 upon 5 epsilon f. So, that total kinetic energy of the electron cloud can be written as using 48 as equal to total kinetic energy which is a functional of density n is equal to integral from 0 to infinity 3 upon 5 e phi r n r 4 pi r square dr. To know the potential energy of the electron cloud, we recall that potential phi r at a given r is because of the nucleus of the atom and is z e upon r and the remaining is the potential energy because of the electron cloud itself. The second part is the difference phi r minus z e upon r. Thus, the total potential energy which is once again a functional of n is equal to minus e integral from 0 to infinity z e upon r plus half phi r minus z e upon r multiplied by n r 4 pi r square d r. Thus, adding 72 and 73, the total energy of the electron cloud can be written as a functional of density E n is equal to integral from 0 to infinity 1 upon 10 E phi r minus half z e square by r n r 4 pi r square d r. Since using 69 n r can be expressed as term of phi r, the two terms in 74 contain two integrals. Integral from 0 to infinity phi r is to power 5 by 2 r square d r and integral from 0 to infinity phi r 3 upon 2 r d r. Using the solution proposed with the slope of minus 1.5886 binding energy of the atom can be expressed as E b is equal to minus E naught is equal to 1.538 into E square upon 2 h bar square upon m e square into z raised to power 7 by 3. Some very interesting observations can be made here. Number 1, total energy of electron cloud is proportional to z raised to power 7 by 3. The mean energy of the electron is proportional to z raised to power 4 by 3. Since mean momentum is proportional to z raised to power 2 by 3, mean wavelength of the electron cloud is proportional to z raised to power minus 2 by 3. Overall linear dimension of the cloud is proportional to z raised to power minus 1 by 3. Third and fourth imply that Thomas Fermi model is applicable in the case of heavier atoms so that z raised to power minus 2 by 3 is very very much less than z raised to power minus 1 by 3. Also since this is a statistical approach, it works better when the number of particles in the system are large. Classical and quantum Hall effects. To appreciate quantum Hall effect, we will first focus on classical Hall effect and look at the two very important quantities DC conductivity and resistivity tensor. Classical Hall effect, known after the name of Edwin Herbert Hall, who first discovered it in 1879 while studying the flow of current in a thin metallic strip in x y plane caused by a voltage applied in the x direction in the presence of a magnetic field applied perpendicular to its plane in the direction of z axis. Since current flows in the direction of x axis, the charges constituting it experience a Lorentz force leading to accumulation of charges on the sides of the metallic strip as shown in figure 2. We can look at it in two steps. One, when there is no magnetic field and number 2 when magnetic field is switched on. When there is no magnetic field, let us see what happens. Number 1, in the absence of magnetic field, the conductivity sigma 0 is given by the relation J is equal to sigma 0 E, where J is the current density and E is the electric field resulting from the application of voltage in the direction of x axis. By applying Brute model, the conductivity sigma 0 can be estimated. Assuming that only electrons near the Fermi surface participate in the flow which collide with each other having mean path L0, 
traveled between two successive collisions in a typical time tau zero such that L zero is equal to V f tau zero. In the presence of electric field between two successive collisions, electrons experience a change in velocity delta V is equal to minus E multiplied by electric field divided by M whole multiplied by tau of zero. The current then is the summative effect on all such electrons participating in conduction such that current density j can be written as j is equal to minus e times n times delta v is equal to e square n times tau 0 upon m times e is equal to sigma 0 e where n is the electron density and sigma 0 is equal to e square n tau 0 upon m is the so called DC conductivity or brute conductivity. Though it is a purely classical picture by replacing m by effective mass m star, one can reproduce results in some specific cases incorporating quantum effects in an ad hoc manner. Sigma naught is the sigma xx element of the conductivity tensor as we write later in the presence of magnetic field. When magnetic field is applied, let us see what happens. In the presence of the magnetic field B, the electrons experience an additional Lorentz force minus E V cross B upon C so that the current density takes the form J is equal to sigma 0 E minus E square N V cross B upon E N C is equal to sigma 0 times E minus J cross B divided by E N C or 1 upon sigma 0 multiplied by J plus sigma 0 J cross B upon N E C is equal to E, where for B is equal to 0, 0 times B, that is the magnetic field being applied in the z direction, the resistivity tensor rho ij can be obtained from AT by writing three components of E as follows Ex is equal to 1 upon sigma naught multiplied by Jx, sigma naught upon NEC multiplied by J cross B, and the component of X is equal to 1 upon sigma naught multiplied by Jx plus sigma naught upon NEC Jy into B. Ey is equal to 1 upon sigma naught Jy plus sigma naught upon NEC J cross B component Y is equal to 1 upon sigma naught Jy plus sigma naught upon NEC multiplied by minus Jx into B. Ez is equal to 1 upon sigma naught Jz plus sigma naught upon NEC j cross b component z is equal to 1 upon sigma 0 j z. In matrix form this can be expressed as E x E y E z column matrix is equal to the 3 cross 3 matrix 1 upon sigma 0 b n e c 0 minus b n e c 1 upon sigma 0 0 0 0 1 upon sigma 0 multiplied by the column matrix j x j y j z is equal to 3 cross 3 matrix rho x x rho x y 0 rho y x rho y y 0 0 0 rho z z multiplied by 3 cross 1 matrix that is column matrix j x j y and j z where rho is equal to rho x x rho x y and 0 rho y x rho y y 0 0 0 rho z z is the resistivity tensor and rho x x is equal to rho y y is equal to rho z z is equal to 1 upon sigma 0 and rho x y is equal to minus rho y x is equal to m upon n e square multiplied by e b upon m c is equal to tau 0 upon sigma 0 omega c. Here omega c is cyclotron frequency and tau 0 is a relaxation time. Rho x y is equal to b upon n e c is Hall resistivity. Alternatively in terms of tau 0, sigma 0 and omega c we can write it as Ex Ey Ez is equal to 1 upon sigma 0 tau 0 sigma 0 omega c 0 minus tau 0 sigma 0 omega c 1 upon sigma 0 0 0 0 1 upon sigma 0 multiplied by column matrix Jx Jy Jz is equal to 1 upon sigma 0 1 upon minus tau 0 omega c 0 tau naught omega c 1 0 0 0 1 multiplied by 3 cross 1 matrix Jx, Jy, Jz. From 85, the conductivity tensor can be obtained by inversion and is given by Jx, Jy, Jz 
is equal to sigma 0 multiplied by 1 upon 1 plus tau naught square omega c square minus tau naught omega c upon 1 plus tau naught square omega c square 0 tau naught omega c upon 1 plus tau naught square omega c square 1 upon 1 plus tau naught square omega c square 0 0 0 1 multiplied by 3 cross 1 matrix ex ey ez which is equal to sigma 0 upon 1 plus tau naught square omega c square multiplied by 1 minus tau naught omega c 0 tau naught omega c 1 0 0 0 1 plus tau naught square omega c square multiplied by 3 cross 1 column matrix ex ey ez a more rigorous way of discussing this effect is via Boltzmann transport equation which is beyond the scope of present course. Classically, it will be interesting to plot DC resistivity rho xx is equal to m e square n tau naught and Hall resistivity rho xy is equal to v n e c against b which will be interesting to look at in the context of quantum Hall effect as shown in figure 3. One notes that rho xx is independent of b and rho x y varies linearly with b. Quantum Hall effect. Almost after 100 years of the discovery of Hall effect, a surprising experimental result for Hall effect was obtained in the presence of a strong field and low temperature in a two-dimensional conductivity channel, more often called two-dimensional electron gas. A two-dimensional electron gas is formed in semiconductor devices and is used for investigation of quantum Hall effect. Such two-dimensional electron gas is also formed in semiconductor heterojunctions like gallium arsenide, gallium aluminium arsenide and in graphene. K. von Klitzing, Dorda and Pepper found in such a channel formed in metal oxide semiconductors that Hall resistance is a simple multiple of a quantity which contains only fundamental constants namely charge of an electron and Planck constant. Importance of this discovery lies in the fact that quantum Hall effect provides a high precision standard of electrical resistance which is easily reproducible. Quantum Hall effect is of three types, integer quantum Hall effect, fractional quantum Hall effect, relativistic quantum Hall effect as observed in graphene. In the following, we will focus only on observation and qualitative discussion on how integer quantum Hall effect can be explained. Integer quantum Hall effect. Here, we consider a two-dimensional electron gas as observed in metal oxide semiconductors or heterojunctions like gallium arsenide and gallium aluminium arsenide. Schematically, to get into a state of equilibrium, Fermi level across the junction needs to be the same. This causes a transfer of electrons from n-type gallium aluminium arsenide region to gallium arsenide region near the junction, leading to a dipolar region of 100 angstrom width. The excess electrons get confined to move only in the planar region of the junction. The quantum Hall effect observed in this case is schematically shown in the adjoining figure, which is a plot of Hall resistivity and DC resistivity. If we compare the results with classical Hall effect, figure 3, we find that Hall resistivity is not linear and shows plateaus for certain specific values of magnetic field, and in between two plateaus, DC resistivity shows a sudden spike from some zero to some maximum value. To understand this, we must see what happens to the density of state at b is equal to zero to when b is not equal to zero, that is when magnetic field is applied. With changes in b, following three scenarios are possible. First, b is equal to zero. Second, b is equal to b1, not equal to zero. And third, b is equal to b2, not equal to zero and B2 is greater than B1, which results in the formation of highly degenerate Landau levels with number of states in the Landau levels given by Ev upon H, which corresponds to the measure of degeneracy level of the Landau level. Figure 5 shows density of states, 
loss of a two dimensional electron gas for B is equal to 0, which is constant, B is equal to B1 not equal to 0, leading to formation of Landau levels, and C B V is equal to B2 not equal to 0 and B2 greater than 1. Landau level crossing the Fermi energy epsilon f. Note increase in distance between Landau levels with increase in B. Suppose there are I Landau levels below Fermi level, which are completely filled, then the possible number of carriers available are n is equal to i e times b upon h and the Hall resistivity comes out to be rho x y is equal to b upon n e c is equal to h upon i e square. Current flows only when Fermi energy lies inside the Landau level leading to change in voltage and non-zero resistance occurs as shown in figure 6 which is basically depicting behavior of Hall resistivity and DC conductivity when Fermi level lies inside a Landau level. Marker in red shows the value of rho x y which is h upon 1 e square and DC resistivity rho x x. In between two Landau levels no change in occupation of levels takes place. Hall resistivity stays constant resulting in plateau. This is the qualitative explanation of integer quantum Hall effect. Degoras theoretical explanation was given by R. B. Laughlin, according to which it is a consequence of gauge invariance and is beyond the scope of this course. Frictional quantum Hall effect. When two dimensional electron gas is at extremely low temperatures and extremely high magnetic field, quantum Hall effect with frictional values of I in 88 has been observed. The frictional values of I are 1 upon 3, 2 upon 3, 2 upon 5, 3 upon 5, 4 upon 5, and 2 upon 7. To explain it, one needs to conclude electron electron interactions beyond integer quantum Hall effect. It will be very interesting to appreciate the significance of the discovery of quantum Hall effect. The real significance of the discovery of quantum Hall effect lies in the fact that it is accurate to 1 part in 10 raised to the power 9 leading to very accurate standard of resistance h upon e square which is equal to 25812.806 ohm which is correct to 1 part in 2 into 10 raised to the power 8. This has further made the value of fine structure constant e square upon h bar c approximately equal to 1 upon 137.036 a value correct to 0 0.3 parts per million. International standard of resistance has also been given the name Klitsing which is equal to 25813 ohm in honor of K. von Klitsing, a German physicist who discovered integer quantum Hall effect. For this discovery of quantum Hall effect, Klaus von Klitsing got a Nobel Prize in 19 in this module, we have learnt three applications of Fermi gas, namely white dwarf star as relativistic degenerate Fermi gas, Thomas Fermi statistical model of an atom as degenerate electron gas of non-uniform density and quantum Hall effect in a two-dimensional electron gas. We learnt that as per Hertz Sprung Russell diagram, white dwarf stars are very low luminosity stars in their terminal stage of evolution. We learned that the cause of low luminosity is complete exhaustion of hydrogen as a fuel in the white dwarf star. We learned that white dwarf stars have very large gravity, very high core density, and a radius much less than the radius of sun. We learned that characteristic features of white dwarfs suggest that they are made up of helium nuclei and highly degenerate relativistic electron gas. We learned that the stability of white dwarf is because of balancing of the outward poly pressure and inward gravitational pressure. That the ground state energy of the degenerate relativistic electron gas modeling white dwarf star is E0 is equal to pi m raised to power 4, c raised to power 5, 
divided by h cube multiplied by v times chi x where chi x is equal to x into square root of 1 plus x square multiplied by 1 plus 2 x square minus log of x plus square root of 1 plus x square where x is equal to Fermi momentum divided by mc. We learned that in the ultra relativistic case the ground state energy and pressure can be written as E naught is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 upon h cube multiplied by v multiplied by 2 times x raised to power 4 and pressure is equal to negative of the partial derivative of E naught with respect to v is equal to pi times m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube multiplied by 2 upon 3 x raised to power 4 which is equal to one third of ground state energy divided by volume which is equal to 1 upon 3 energy density. In terms of number density it can be written as pressure is proportional to number density raised to power 4 by 3. In non-relativistic case we learned that the ground state and pressure can be written as E naught minus nmc square is equal to pi m power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube multiplied by v multiplied by 4 upon 5 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order x raised to power 7 and pressure is equal to negative of the partial derivative of ground state energy with respect to volume which is equal to pi m raised to power 4 c raised to power 5 divided by h cube multiplied by 8 upon 15 x raised to power 5 plus terms of the order of x raised to power 7 which is equal to 2 third of E0 upon V which is equal to 2 third of energy density. In terms of number density it can be written as pressure is proportional to number density raised to power 5 upon 3. We learned that by equating poly pressure P is equal to K m bar raised to power 5 by 3 divided by r bar raised to power 4 minus m bar raised to power 2 by 3 divided by r bar raised to power 2 and gravitational pressure pg is equal to k dash m bar square upon r bar raised to power 4 relationship between radius and white dwarf mass can be obtained as r bar is equal to m bar raised to power 1 by 3 multiplied by 1 minus m bar upon m bar 0 raised to power 2 by 3 whole raised to power 1 by 2. We learned that relationship between white dwarf radius and mass suggests that there is an upper limit on the mass of the white dwarf called Chandrasekhar limit and it is estimated to be 1.44 times the mass of the sun. We learned that Thomas Fermi model of an atom is a statistical model which assumes atom is a completely degenerate Fermi gas of non-uniform electron density nr experiencing an external potential phi r. We learned that nr and phi r are related to each other by the relation nr is equal to 1 upon 3 pi square multiplied by 2 times m e upon h bar square phi r raised to power 3 by 2 and that the external potential phi r satisfies the Poisson equation leading to famous Thomas Fermi equation second derivative of phi x with respect to x is equal to phi x raised to power 3 by 2 divided by x raised to power half where x is equal to r upon mu and phi x is equal to phi r upon z e divided by r. We learnt that the solution of Thomas Fermi equation yields external electric potential phi r proportional to z raised to power phi by 3 and n r proportional to z square. We also learned that binding energy of an atom with atomic number z using Thomas Fermi statistical model can be calculated as E b is equal to minus E0 is equal to 1.538 times e square upon 2 times h bar square by m e square multiplied by z raised to power 7 by 3. We learned that Thomas Fermi model being a statistical model yields 
better results for atoms with higher Z. We learned that the classical Hall effect is appearance of an electric field in thin conductor perpendicular to the current when subjected to a transverse magnetic field. We learned that in the case of classical Hall effect, DC resistivity rho xx is equal to m upon e square n tau 0 and Hall resistivity rho xy is equal to b upon n e c. We learned that with change in magnetic field, DC resistivity stays constant whereas Hall resistivity varies linearly. We learned that quantum Hall effect is observed at very low temperatures and strong magnetic field in a two-dimensional electron gas trapped in a metal oxide semiconductor or semiconductor heterojunction of gallium arsenide and gallium aluminium arsenide. We learned that quantum Hall resistivity is quantized due to formation of highly degenerate Landau labels in the presence of a magnetic field and that current across the metal oxide semiconductor or heterojunction flows only when Fermi level passes through the Landau level. We learned that integer quantum Hall resistivity rho xy is equal to h upon i e square where i is the number of completely filled Landau levels below the Fermi energy. We learned that with growing magnetic field, Hall resistivity as a function of B shows plateaus and DC resistivity falls to zero. We learned that at extremely low temperatures and extremely high magnetic field, instead of integral quantum Hall effect, fractional quantum Hall effect is observed with I is equal to 1 upon 3, 2 upon 3, 2 upon 5, 3 upon 5, 4 upon 5, and 2 upon 7, a result of electron-electron interaction. We learned that significance of Hall effect lies in the discovery of new and highly accurate standard unit of resistance correct to 1 part in 10 is to power 9 and a very accurate value of fine structure constant E square upon h bar c, a value correct to 0 0.3 parts per million. Thank you.